Well, I guess we're not experts in the whole field of mental health. We wouldn't have said it was our you know, area of expertise at all. But in recent years, we're coming across more and more parents who are struggling uh, with a variety of mental health conditions. Um, and there's a whole range of factors that are at play. But I think if you're struggling with your finances, if you're struggling to you know, feed your kids, keep your kids warm, if you're isolated in a community, maybe a big urban housing estate where you don't know anybody, um, all of these factors um, have kind of piled up on top of people. Uh, so you're seeing a lot of people struggling with health uh, kind of breaking down. Um, and one of the things that that affects is your uh, ability to be the parent you want to be. Now, that's a long way from saying, you know, if your health breaks down, you should lose your children. Of course you shouldn't. But what we're finding is that parents are really living in fear. They want help, they're looking for help, but they're terrified that if they acknowledge any kind of mental health difficulty, that the first thing that will be called into question is their parenting capacity. When in fact what they need is support. Those supports that are there tend to be for individuals. They tend to be of a very medical kind. So you can go to your GP. There's medication, there's different kinds of treatment, there's referrals to professionals uh, and all of that. The thing that tends to be forgotten um, in our experience is that if you have a mental health problem and somebody classifies you as a patient, you're still a parent, you're still a mum, you're still a dad, you still have all the issues going on at home that you want to get in touch with and get on top of. Um, our experience has been that the services, first of all, operate on the basis of this kind of medicalized approach and secondly are very, very siloed. Um, it's very, very unusual for a psychologist, for example, to say, I can treat you, but I also want to help support you with your family. Um, they tend to make this distinction. They tend to almost to cut you off uh, from your family once you become, uh, you, once you attract the label of being a patient. So one of the things we're trying to do is raise awareness of, of this as an issue, to try to encourage people to come together, um, to actually address the fact that People aren't just patients, sure they have medical needs from time to time, but much more than that, they have support needs. We know in our own projects, for example, that if a mum is struggling or a dad is struggling, there's a variety of different ways we can help. Um, people go from our projects to help get kids up in the morning, to help maintain routines in the house, to help ensure that, you know, despite all the issues that might be affecting mum or dad, that kids are still going to school, that kids are still feeling supported. Uh, and, and a part of the family. The system as a whole tends not to do that. The system tends to just uh, concentrate on the individual and on the immediate therapeutic requirements. So what we'd like to see is much more dialogue, much more interagency work, much more collaboration around the needs of the whole family. Families need to be included, they need to be involved. Kids want to be part of their parents' recovery. Um, they want to help, they want to support. It can be an intolerable burden to place on a child's shoulder um, to say, you know, you're responsible for your mum or your dad's well-being. But it's an equally intolerable burden to say, we're not going to tell you what's going on here. We're not going to tell you when mum will be well again. We're not going to tell you when you're going to be able to see your mum or dad again. So you need to, we need to break down all those kind of barriers. So if depression hits your household and mum or dad is really finding it very difficult to cope, that can be the loneliest place in the world for a child to be. Suddenly it seems as if mum doesn't love you anymore. Um, suddenly it seems as if you can't talk to mum or dad. Suddenly it seems as if there's something mysterious going on in your family and you haven't a clue what it is, how you can help, what's happening. And in many cases that we come across, the thing that kids ask us was, is, is it something I did? Is this my fault? Um, you know, I want mum to be better, I want dad to be better. But the thing that's really bothering them is the sense that they have in some sense contributed to the problem. And of course, they haven't.